Hello everyone, thank you so much for joining this video. We're going to do a reaction to my boy uh, Chris Van Vliet. This uh, interview with Jake the Snake Roberts, I'm very intrigued to what he has to say. I thought maybe you guys might enjoy this. This video should be up during Smackdown, so I'm hoping that you know we'll get some interest on that. Jake Roberts, we all know and love for many of her childhood and we know <laughs> everything that that man's been through and how he's finally sober so we all need to give a big congratulations to him I know that was not easy for him to do but I'm glad he did or I don't think he would be here with us today so thank God for uh, Diamond Dallas Page for really changing that man's life around and I'm glad Jake wanted to do that himself because that's the important key is you want to do it yourself so and that's when you see more successful results but being 39 i grew up watching this man was a big fan and i just thought i'd share this with you guys if you're new to the channel please subscribe down below if you already have subscribed please leave a like or a comment i'd really really appreciate it just want to get you guys some content out there it's going to be a busy busy week of wrestling with smackdown and aew all out tomorrow so looking forward to interacting with you guys all weekend. Should be a fun Labor Day weekend and no work on Monday. So good news on that. Plenty of rest. Have some fun and get some videos out to you guys. So that's going to be it. We're going to hit the intro and then we're going to react to Chris Van Fleet interviewing Jake the Snake Roberts. Welcome back everybody, here's the interview with Chris Van Fleet and Jake the Snake Roberts, um, being a first time listener as well, so we're all going to enjoy this together, so there may not be that much talking as I did in the APW video, because I really want to hear what he has to say, and want to give you guys that respect, so I'll try not to talk too much, so here we go, hope you guys enjoy, thank you. Alright, I'm very good with that. <laughs> I don't need to be around him, and he doesn't need to be around me. All right, well, please put your hands together for Jake the Snake Roberts. I'm wearing the mask so that people can see your lovely face. Oh, wow. What a wild time to be alive, right? He beats the options. You know? uh, <laughs> Did you ever think that in 2020 you'd be signed full time to a wrestling company? No. Uh, surprise! I've lasted this long. Actually, uh, <laughs> you know, I just uh, at some point in your life you decide you want to do things that make you happy, and uh, I was okay with that. But <clears throat> amen. Sometimes I say the wrong things because I feel that way. But I realize that at the end of the day, I want to be able to look in the mirror and say, I like that guy, mm. you know? And uh, if it means that I can't work for Vince, that's fine. I'm very good with that. <clears throat> um, I don't need to be around him and he doesn't need to be around me. <laughs> it's just the way it is. Uh, so, I'm very, very happy. I feel very fortunate. I've been blessed. And um, I got a pretty good guy to run with. Yeah, you do. When you look in the mirror now, do you like this guy? Oh, yeah. yeah. Good, yeah. good. So Lance Archer, if you guys <laughs> don't know who he's talking about. Actually, I'm thinking about doing it anyway. <laughs> so, you're running with Lance Archer now. Yeah. How'd they get you paired up with Lance? A phone call, man. Uh, they came with the idea and they asked me if I'd be interested. And I said, well, sure. And uh, they wanted me for 10 weeks. And uh, then after that 10 weeks was up, they just said, please stay. Mm. 
Okay. You know, and it was just great timing because uh, had the virus not been going on, I'd have been out doing my shows all the time and I wouldn't have had time to do them. Yeah. So now it's worked out to where I can do both. Right. And uh, I'm hopeful, real hopeful that I'll be able to start doing my comedy shows again come like November, December. So. Right. And I got a book coming out real soon, so. Make sure you guys go yeah. to Audible. That's great. It's when when are you expecting times. the book to come out? The next six weeks. Oh, wow. What's it yeah. called? Audibletrial.com. Okay. Well, we'll find yeah. out in six weeks, then. Yeah, absolutely. When you say that you can't work for Vince again, is that because you're with AEW? No. No, I just... Uh... <sighs> but you get, I mean, you have the WWE Hall of Fame ring yeah. on as you hold this mic. Yeah. So obviously, well, I earned things, that. Obviously, so. yes, 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 sir, you did. But obviously, there's, there's a lot of people in there that didn't earn those rings. <laughs> <laughs> More applause for that. Wow. <laughs> but things must have been okay with Vince, or okay enough with him, to be in the Hall of Fame. Well, he done it because it was the right thing, the smart thing. You know, uh, don't kid yourself. The reason that uh, they still have toys being made of me is because they still sell you know I mean it, that's that, that probably blows my mind more than anything else and I can go into a Walmart or someplace and there'll be another damn toy being made of me yeah. like wait a minute I haven't been on TV in 30 years what the hell man it's just really odd I think you know and uh, but I understand it from from the fans because the talent today, they don't know how to, they don't know how to get over it. Very true. And they don't know. For most of them. Wrestling today is all visual, you know. In my day, it wasn't. It was through the heart. It was emotional. I wanted to hook you up emotionally. And the thing about the difference is visual last a split second, then the brain wants something fresh. But emotionally, if I hook you one time, I've got you for the rest of your life. Because you'll always go back to that moment. So, hey man, good for me because uh, they're still <laughs> selling shit on me that it's, it's kind of freaky. But <laughs> nobody cut a promo the way that you cut a promo. Yeah. Who inspired you? Whose style did you, or maybe it's... Nobody. Um, wow. was it, was it was it? an accident. Uh, what happened was um, I was wrestling a guy by the name of Bob Roop, and uh, he dropped a knee in my Don't throat. Don't know who that is. And it crushed my voice box. Ouch. So this is as loud as I can go. If I try to go any louder, nothing comes out. So, and I've always hated those interviews where guys are screaming. Because number one, if you're screaming at me, I'm turning that shit off. <laughs> I'm not listening to you. And then I just kind of explored the idea of, of talking low and whispering because I realized that worked. You know, I mean, if you walk into a crowded room and shout, everybody get on the floor, you, you know, and you walk off. <laughs> but if you walk into that same room and you go, Psst, I got to tell you something, it's a secret. Everybody in there wants to hear this. Yeah. So it, I just went with that. And, uh, you know, I love music, so I take groups of words off of a song and uh, implement them. Because my thought is if I can say something that you've heard before, you'll be agreeing with it before you know what you're doing. You know? So I just kind of roll with that, man. And I, and I liked having fun doing them, you know? I mean, I'm, I'm I've, I've never considered what I do work. That's the best kind of work. Because it's like it is for I you two, for me. <laughs> you know, because I love what I did. You know, I mean, it's just uh, good times. It might be hard to narrow it down to just one, but do you have a promo that really stands out for you? Yes. Yes. Uh, it's one where I. I told the cameraman just to roll it. So they said, go. And I went. <laughs> the guy's like, hey, man, we can't hear you. No shit. 
you know? <laughs> That's the idea. So I did it again, and then after about 40 seconds, I stopped and I went, now, Tell your son that Jake Roberts can't get you off the couch and make you try to fix a TV that's not even broken. <laughs> Don't you feel like a complete idiot? <laughs> Tell your son you're not scared of me. That's another lie. You know, and I just, and it was fun, man. And I got so many hate mail letters like, I can't believe I got out of my chair to try to fix my damn table. <laughs> <laughs> well, I'm so sorry, you know. <laughs> One of my favorites, it's in your Hall of Fame like vignette, is Mean Gene says to you, you are a sick man, Jake Roberts. And you say, thank you very much. Thank you very much. <laughs> <laughs> I can't imagine that was planned out. I, I, did, I didn't ever plan an interview. I, uh, wow. I had an idea in my mind what I might want to say, but I just went out there and went for it, yeah. man. Just let it come out. But if you do things naturally, they seem to uh, uh -huh. take on a whole different animal. Okay. Mm -hmm. Yeah. People can tell when you're forcing an interview. Oh, People can tell when you're oh, reciting an interview. <laughs> you know, the same way they can tell a match that's been. Uh, uh. <laughs> I never did that. I never practiced. Practice? <laughs> Fuck you. I don't know how to practice wrestling. Because, I mean, the idea is your action causes my reaction. That's all I need. Mean. You know, these guys that go out there and they're trying to remember 20 things. Mm -hmm. And they miss one and it just totally messes them up. And they don't know what to do then. And Vince. they don't know what to do anyway. What the hell? <laughs> uh, guys ask me a lot, you know, what would you do? And I'll tell you, here, here it is. Never destroy your own, uh, oh my God, just a second, brain fart. Let get those. Wow. You got it. Yeah, I got it. I got it. Not, not momentum. Uh, never discredit yourself. Never uh, destroy your own bada bing. Anyway, it's, it's like this. If uh, let's just say you were married for 20 years and you never messed around on your wife, you know, and that 21st year, Jake Roberts came to town. He took you out, and the next thing you know, you're in bed with a midget. And you feel so bad the next day that you've cheated on your wife, who you've never done that with, that you have to go and tell her the truth. During that conversation, you say, now you know, honey, I've never cheated on you before, but this one time, it Excuse happened, me. and I feel so bad about it. Do you think she believes you? Once you destroy your own credibility, you cannot get that mm -hmm. back. I tell guys, less is more. Because if you do things absolutely perfect, the fans will get behind you. But if it's a little bit off, you're just another phony. And you don't come back. You destroy your own credibility. I mean, that's the reason I know God's not a woman. Because God forgives and forgets. A woman might forgive you. <laughs> Forgetting shit. <laughs> All right, I gotta stop that right there, guys. Vince, not like you hear this channel, but that is so very true. Less is better. You don't need to have fucking three pay per views in just a little over a month. You don't need to shove things down people's throat. Just Take it easy. The fans will eventually get behind it. And the thing he said about, you know, the 20 different things in the script, don't script the wrestlers. Some need it, but the ones who don't, just let it go. You will have better programming because of it.
So real quick, uh, keeping an eye on this wasp that's like right fucking next. Get out of here. Sorry about that, guys. Uh, I'll have to cut this part out. <laughs> but let's resume the video. I just thought I'd mention that real quick. That's the only bad thing about not having an office space. You start to move around and everything shakes. So, anyways, enough of me. Back to the interview. You know, it's crazy to look at your career in WWE and think that you never won a championship. Does it bother you at all? No, I, I never needed one, man. Why do I want to carry a 10-pound belt around, too? I got a 100-pound <laughs> snake. I got a trunk I carry it in. And I got my wrestling gear and my clothes. I can't carry nothing else. Um, I, I, some guys need to have a title just to make them a star. I was already a star, you know. Uh, I didn't need a title to... Uh, make my name uh, I did sorry again you don't need to fucking change the title off someone 50 million times Vince put my shit in the ring yeah so I'd like to have the money that went with it <laughs> <laughs> was yeah. it a, it was a different snake every single town you went to no 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 okay I'd, I'd have this the is same, a misconception same snake ever for, for 10 days or so then I'd have to trade them out did you ever get a snake that you didn't like and went? <laughs> <laughs> when I first went to WWE, they had me a snake handler. And all I could say about him was he was Charles Manson. Your snake handler was Charles yeah, Manson. He was worse than Charles Manson. This guy was really weird. And um, I got the snake and this thing was going crazy on me and stuff. I'm like, dude, this snake, he's like, don't worry about that one. I got you a new one coming, and I guarantee you it's going to get Steamboat for you. What? I promise you, he's going to get Steamboat. <laughs> Does he know what Steamboat looks like? <laughs> and think so. So I had to uh, smarten him up that we were actually in business together to have a good match <laughs> and that I didn't need a snake attacking him and killing him. <laughs> that and the fact that, wait a minute, I'm the one that has to pick it up. Wait a minute, it's my hotel room it sleeps in. It's my bathtub it stays in at night. Like hell it does. Did the snake ever get out? Oh, yeah. Like oh, yeah. into the hotel? Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. 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 <laughs> Uh, you guys remember the killer bees? Well, of course, yeah. Um, Jim Brunzel and I shared a room one night. He was terrified of the snake. Now, I don't know what happened if I accidentally left the bathroom door open or something. <laughs> maybe. <laughs> or maybe he left it open. I don't know. No, because he wouldn't even go in there. But uh, during the night, the snake got out and crawled across his face. And he woke up with it like crawling across his face. And I had taken some uh, resting pills. <laughs> some <laughs> sure. Sleeping pills and uh, Jim could not get me awake. And so I woke up the next morning about 10 o'clock after nine or 10 hours of great sleep and to see Jim Brunzel sitting up on the back of a chair and doing this. I'm like, what are you doing? He goes, keep an eye out for that snake. I'm like, oh, where is he? He goes, I don't, I can't find him, see him anymore. I think he went under the bed and I don't know where he's at. Well, just throw him in the bathroom. He couldn't do it. Oh. Uh, that was the last time we split a room. Yeah, I got <laughs> how, how did you know going into the ring, it was usually a python, right? Yeah. How did you know that everything was gonna be fine? Uh, I always expected it not to be fine. That way when it was, it was like, oh, okay, that's great. Uh, I got bit a lot of times. Um, other people got bit. Um, but they're not venomous at least. No, but I don't care if it's venomous or not, it hurts like hell. Sure. Um, Do you still have bite marks on you? Oh, yeah. Yeah. These are all oh, my gosh. 
Wow. 30 that stitches. That snake committed suicide, by the way. <laughs> he did. I, I got to the back and I was bleeding everywhere, man, because it got that vein. Every time my heart would be, you'd shoot about 20 feet. And I picked the snake up and, man, I don't know, he overpowered me or something, but he just dove at the wall with his head. <laughs> you know? And I pulled him back and he did it again. And I pulled him back and he did it again. That poor snake. Yeah, until it was flat. <laughs> Uh, I had a snake attack me in Indianapolis that uh, got around my neck. And the last thing I remember, it only took two or three seconds, was like car lights were coming at me. I'm like, what the heck? And then I went down and Steamboat took him off of me, or I'd been dead because uh, the wow. snake was constricting around your neck. People don't understand, it only takes three or four seconds if it's around these veins to cut the blood flow off to your brain. So. Wow. Yeah, it was interesting because I, when I came to, I just rolled over and I looked and I seen about that much of the snake still in the ring and the rest of it was in row one, two, and three. Jeez. And the people were scattering and uh, it became a very dangerous moment then because a lot of people could have got hurt. So I grabbed the snake by the tail and whipped it back into the ring. Oh. Yeah, that's fun. The snake you used for the Macho Man bit. Yeah. It's a cobra. Yeah. Which sounds King Cobra. Yeah. King Cobra. Yeah. Which that I mean that haunted me as a kid. That's I'm sure good. it haunted everybody as a kid. Good. Watching <laughs> yeah, good, thank you. <laughs> Watching a King Cobra attack a man in the yeah. room. I thought it was a great idea. <laughs> <laughs> uh, you know, you probably heard before the story where Savage made the snake bite me first to make sure it wasn't poisonous. I'm like, Randy, so you really think I'm going to bring a poisonous snake in the ring to bite you and kill you so I can be a champion? No, I, I don't need that. Well, maybe you do, maybe you don't, you know? And, uh, <laughs> Not bad. <laughs> so I had to let it bite me first in the locker room, so I let it bite me on the leg. But it, it did piss me off that he thought that. So when it was time for the snake to bite him, I picked the snake up and turned my back to Macho Man so he couldn't see what I was doing. And I just paintbrushed the hell out of that snake, which now he is hissed off. And he was ready to chew. And um, he did some good chewing. One of my favorite moments of all time. Did you know in the setup for that segment that WWF's reaction would be putting this red X on the screen? No, I didn't. Because it was so weird to see that. Yeah, it, it got out there uh, once or twice, but most of the time they put the red X on there. You know. It took all the fun out of it for me. So that snake was devenomized? Yeah, he had the venom sacs removed. And the and, fangs and removed? Filled. No. Oh. Uh, cobras don't have fangs, they have teeth like a fish. You know, it's just spiny teeth. I mean, I used to get, back in the days when I was drinking, I'd get drunk in the hotel room and I'd, I'd get bored and I'd put that cobra on the bed and it would stand up and hood up and then I'd hang my arm out there and let him try to bite me. And it was easy to, you know. Like you're playing they're chicken very, with Yeah, they're very slow. Cobras are very slow. A python strikes so fast you can't even see it. A python has fangs about that long. A cobra has nothing. So even if the snake bit you, it didn't hurt. The only thing that freaked you out is when you look down and seen an animal chewing on you. <laughs> you know, that kind of, wait a minute, this is right, you know? And uh, that's what freaked Savage out, because the snake was like, and it freaked him out. Freak out! <laughs> <laughs> How much of what you have now, you sitting here right now, do you have to owe to DDP? My life. Nobody knows the pain that is involved with addiction. If you haven't been there, you don't know. You cannot understand it. You cannot get your mind around it. Nobody I've ever met has told me, you know, when I was young, man, my dream was to grow up and become a drug addict and an alcoholic. Nobody dreams that. 
but it does happen. It can happen quickly. It can happen over time. But you don't know till you're there. And once you're there, it's too late. It's too late. It took me three years to get sober. I had to live with him. I didn't go anywhere by myself. You know, um, I quit driving cars for 10 years because me alone with a car is not a good thing. I might just wind up in the wrong place. And um, don't want to do that. Oh, shoot. Hey, parents. Are Sorry, you guys. Three, two, one. Skip that. I, I, I did that movie or documentary or whatever you want to call it because I wanted other people to know that, that you could make it. It's not easy, man. God, it's not easy. It's a lot of suffering, a lot of lonely nights, a lot of hate, a lot of hate. But the only way for recovery to happen is for you to get honest with yourself mm -hmm. and talk about where you're at. You know, whether you've been molested as a child like I was, the only way to make it better is to talk about it, which is something you don't want to do, but you have to. Mm -hmm. And um, for other people to, to have seen that documentary, I've had hundreds of people thank me for doing it. I it out. I've had a lot of people come to me and say, man, when I seen that, that was the last day I drank. And that right there makes me feel good. Because yeah. um, no human being should, should ever have to feel the, the pain that addiction can put on you. When, um, when did Dallas approach you and go, Jake, I think you've got a problem? He never did. He just said, hey, man, do you want to quit? No. Oh. Hell yeah, but it's never happened before. I've been to three rehabs. I've done all that stuff. It didn't work. But what worked for me was doing it for a longer period of time, having guidance, having um, a support team, and by him not giving up on me. Because um, it wasn't always smooth. It, there were some bad days. And there were there were four instances where I went out and drank. Well, most places would have kicked you out, you know. But uh, he just said, "Just shut up, come back tomorrow." And I'm like, damn man, aren't you gonna give up on me? You know? No, I'm not giving up. Forget it. Well, hell, Good man, man. If you don't give up. That takes half the fun of it. <laughs> so uh, I just stuck with it. Man. And, uh, now I. I I look I meant back DDP. I just, He's an awesome oh my dude. God, I, I just, oh, it's scary. The things that I did, the things that I survived. But uh, again, I just want to help other people that need help. Uh, that's exactly what you're doing now. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. How long were you an addict? <laughs> well, I still am, but uh, I, I guess addiction had me probably by the time I was 16. Damn. Wow. My grandfather was an alcoholic. Hope was alcoholic. It's in, it's in my family genes and all that stuff, but uh, my brother Sam Houston's had a hard time. There you guys. He's got 10 DUIs now. Yeah. Yeah, you Stupid about lantern the bug. Influence your promos have had yeah. on the world of wrestling. Also, your moveset has changed the world of wrestling. DDTs are in almost every match now. Yeah. Which was your finisher. Right. Yeah. <laughs> you just yeah. don't do it, it right. Do you think it takes some of the sting away from your finisher? No, no. Okay. No, if somebody sees it now, they just say, man, when Jake did it to you, you didn't get your ass up. <laughs> <laughs> and that's true. <laughs> that's true. You don't get up if I do it. Where did you come up with the idea for it? An accident in the ring. <laughs> Guy stepped on my foot. We fell backwards. And it was born. Wow. An accident in the ring. And how did you come up with the name? I got up one morning and uh, went to eat breakfast. And I got a newspaper from USA Today. 
And on the front page it said, U.S. government outlaws DDT. Hang in there, guys. Almost and, done. Uh, actually, it was the name of a poison that we used to use on crops and stuff that was getting in our food chain. And really bad stuff. And it was diachloramines, methanol, some of the, you know, one of these names, it's about that long. But they just used DDT. I'm like, perfect. That works. Did you make it stand for something ever? I think a lot of people thought. Oh, they all. They, they means dinner time. That yes. sucks, man. <laughs> like, I would say that. You know? <laughs> well, we're going to take some questions from the fans here. All right, I got a few more minutes. Yes, yeah, so we got a few more minutes. So if you have a question, shoot your hand up and. Uh, yeah, bro. Yes, sir. So I'm going to repeat back in the mic so everybody can hear it. So, what, what advice would you have for somebody going through recovery? Do not give up. If you fall, dust your ass off, get back up, get back in it. Um, and don't listen to your head. You know, because your head will tell you you're not worthy, you're not worth it, uh, you're not going to make it. You're going to hear all that stuff if you're going through it. But just don't give up. Keep reaching. Keep reaching. Don't question? be ashamed to get help. Yes, man. What's your name? Elizabeth. Elizabeth. <laughs> Miss Elizabeth. Where did the snake gimmick come from? I've been Jake the Snake pretty much since I've started wrestling. So. If your name wasn't Jake and it didn't rhyme with it'd Snake. It'd probably be Billy the Bug. <laughs> 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 or Carl the cock, no, Carl the cockroach. <laughs> Co cockroach, that's it. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. What do you want, buddy? Oh, what made you want to put the ultimate warrior in that room with all those snakes? Because I know the guy. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you, right. Jaden. I think that's it, buddy. Okay. Uh, cut it. Give it up, ladies and gentlemen. Thanks, guys. For the legendary Jake the Snake Roberts. Yeah. Thank you very much. Uh, I can't tell you how nice it was to be able to do an interview in person. So a huge thank you to Fighting Words Promotions for inviting me to the Independent Wrestling Expo to host these live interviews, these live Q&As. This one with Jake the Snake is the first of three live interviews. How cool was it? Hearing the fans, hearing the laughter, hearing some applause. It's just so nice. It just brings up the energy. So this is the first of three. We did Jake the Snake Roberts, Gangrel, and Jazz. So keep an eye out for those. They'll be coming out soon. And the card of the Independent Wrestling Expo was stacked. Top to bottom. I'm going to miss out on some names here, but it was Brian Pillman Jr., Brian Cage, Lance Archer, Alex Hammerstone, Sean Spears, Chris Masters, Jacob Fatu, oh my gosh, Jordan Grace, Thunder Rose, I'm gonna miss out on so many here, but a ton of people, you get the point here. And when Jake sat down to do that interview, he was wearing the mask, I was wearing the mask, and I said, do you wanna wear masks for this interview? And he said, well, if you wear yours, I won't wear mine. I thought, well, that's why I said that comment off the top, so people can see his pretty face. No one's on these videos to see me. I am very aware <laughs> of that. And we talked about how Jake the Snake may be the greatest promo in the history of wrestling. But I think you saw here, and you've seen in any other interview that he does, that nobody tells a better story than Jake the Snake Roberts. How good was that? It did me. All right, there you have it, guys. That was a reaction to Jake the Snake Roberts. Hope you guys enjoyed that. It's kind of semi-reaction, not like, you know, stop, 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 talk, 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 you know, like you usually see in music once. But wanted to get your guys' input on what you thought of that. Please leave a like or a comment down below. It really helps me see what you guys are thinking. I would greatly appreciate it. And until next time, I'll see you guys on social media for SmackDown. Don't know if I'll watch the whole show or not. Because WWE tends to put me to sleep sometimes. <laughs> but until next time, please subscribe if you're new to the channel. Remember, it's sponsored by Audible. AudibleTrial.com You can get your free book when uh, Jake the Snake Roberts' book comes out. I think he said in about six weeks. So keep your eye out for that. And until then, guys, I will talk to you later. I well, hope you guys enjoyed that video with Chris Van Vliet, Jake the Snake Roberts. 
interview that was a good solid half hour so in the comments please put I made it to the end I want to see how many people actually watched the whole entire interview I thought it was very good glad I didn't watch it beforehand and I really enjoyed everything he had to say just remember to please leave a like smash that like button it really helps out the algorithm with YouTube and again thank you so much for stopping by my channel and I'll see you guys for Smackdown Live